Last week we began the first stages of completely reciting our 320 square foot cabin. Installing house route proved to be more challenging than expected with ice on the ground and the height that we needed to reach. Up the newly sanded and painted trim went around the windows, only for snow to halt our spring project. We utilized the downtime and headed to town to pick up our siding and more supplies. Before we knew it, the sun returned and the warm weather was here to stay. We spent a day preparing the cabin, and just as fast as the snow came and went, we were making progress. And this one's gonna... I can't even see the... Oh, there it is. It's a little sand. Do you have one long enough? Uh, no. Well, we gotta cut a new one. So we're exactly 173 and a half. We're getting started on siding our cabin. When we first started researching this project, we were thinking we were gonna do some nice real wood siding on the cabin, maybe pine, maybe cedar. Realized quickly those were definitely out of our price range. So we went with this. This is LP smart siding. This is a lap siding. It looks pretty much like a OSB to me on the, on the inside here. And it's primed on three edges. You do not need to back prime. What that means is you don't need to prime the back side of this. These are ready to go up on our walls. Each one of these pieces are eight inches by 16 feet long. So we gotta do a lot of cutting to get them to fit our cabin perfectly. We picked up a whole trailer full. So we got 112 pieces of the siding and a whole nother stack of trim. This is what we've got done so far. We've got five layers. It's really not that easy to put up. This is our first time doing it. We've done a lot of research, but you know, there's just a lot of cuts, a lot of precise cuts, a lot of measuring, and a lot of prep work that goes into putting this type of siding up. The studs on this cabin, they're spaced 24 inches apart and we have them marked on the house wrap here. So each one of these pieces of siding is getting nailed every 24 inches right into the studs. And we're doing something called blind nailing. We're nailing it up really far on the siding. And then the piece of siding that goes over that one covers the nails. So when this is done, you won't see a single nail. It's gonna give us a nice clean look. The way the siding is designed is you can do different reveals and we went with a seven inch reveal. And what that means is that is the part that is showing. So from here down to the bottom, we got seven inches. Below this first panel, we had to put something on that was called a starter strip. Basically we cut a one and a quarter inch section out of a piece of the siding. We nailed it to the back and that kicked out our first angle on the siding for us. And LP siding, they recommend three sixteenths of an inch gap between all butt ends on these panels. So this is a butt end, so where two of them meet, we have a gap there, and then we have a gap on that end where it meets the trim, and then we got a gap back on that end where it meets the trim. And you wanna leave a gap because you are gonna put flexible caulking in between those, and this stuff will expand on us. This one right here we just completed is probably the most difficult cut we've done on this project. We had to notch it around the window, we had to leave our little gaps, turned out awesome. From here on forward, it should be just pretty straightforward until we get to the top. And at that point, we're gonna have to notch out all those rafters. So that's gonna be another interesting cut for us. No, that's perfect.
Throughout this whole siding project, we've bought some new tools, which is awesome because I can always use some new tools. This is one of them. This is a siding nailer. It's a DeWalt. It's a really nice nailer. I have never used one before until today. And that's how I learned right there. Just doing a bunch of nails and figuring this thing out. And we originally were gonna do this project by hand and we started that side by hand. And I got like one piece of trim on and I smashed my thumb and it just was not going my way. And I was like, Errol, let's go buy a nailer. So we did. This thing has been really just working amazing for us. We just ran out of nails for the first time and it holds these coil nails. These are two and a half inch nails. And I believe this is either 300 or 350 nails. So one side of the house takes about 350 nails. Let's load this thing up again. We're getting up to the part that I've kind of dreaded all day. And that's our rafters. We don't have like a soffit like enclosed. So it just goes straight into the rafters. And we're gonna have to notch one of these pieces of siding on every single one. And I think there's like 10 of them we'll have to notch or maybe eight. But anyways, we're getting up to the point where we're trying to decide if we wanna do a different sized reveal. And we've decided that we're gonna go from our seven that we're doing right now, we're gonna knock it down to a six inch reveal as we get closer uh to those rafters that way we have a big enough piece to actually notch out so this one's already set at a six inch reveal let me get this one down to a six inch real quick Alrighty friends, it looks pretty good. I think we did a really good job for our first day for not not really having done this before. Um, Eric worked really, really hard and it was actually pretty miserable in the dripping, the rainy day we had over here. Hopefully that melts soon and we won't have to deal with that. But we got one whole side completed and it may not seem, seem that complex because it's just this little cube, tiny cabin we have, but it was challenging and I'm really, really happy with the way it looks. I think it looks, impeccable i was happy when we put the house wrap up i thought that that looked awesome and now that we have the trim and the siding and everything's just so clean and sharp i think it looks amazing and we're going to be wrapping up shop today because it was a long day
getting started on the next side of the house. Got a beautiful day. We should be here in the sun pretty soon. I'm cutting the trim. We've already got one piece up on that side. We're gonna put this piece up on the back side and we're gonna get started on our starter strip. We've got our starter strip on our 20 foot side and this reaches the whole distance. And the reason for the starter strip is if you were to put your siding on without it, your bottom layer would sit flat. So using this starter strip, it's gonna mimic the way that the rest of them are gonna sit. It's gonna be kicked out a little bit on the bottom like that. And I also mentioned earlier that these came with primer already on them, but when you cut an edge, you need to prime that. We've just been using a can of primer. This is our side trim, and this is made by the same company that makes the siding. It's made by LP. The side one over here is a little bit shorter than the front one, and that is because this one's gonna overlap it. So you'll have the same distance here as you will right here. And this has kind of like the same textured wood as the siding. This is not what we use on the windows. The windows we use pine, which was three quarters of an inch thick. This is actually a little thicker. This is one inch thick. We could have done all the windows with this trim, but this trim is very expensive. So we're just gonna do the edges with this trim. The plan is to get this whole wall done today. And I think we're a little better at it now, now that we did the other wall, which is almost exactly the same as this one. This one just has a little box over here where we ran the, uh, the electrical through to our batteries. So we're gonna get started. We're gonna start on the bottom, work our way up. Just line it up with the middle of it, right? Well, we're finally about to head up. I wish I could say that today has gone better, but it hasn't. It's actually been a nightmare. This side of the house, I don't know why, but it was just a lot more challenging. It was just trickier. So we're finally getting there. We're about to go up on the scaffolding and I just wanted to point out how we are kind of doing the seams, so to speak, where the two pieces meet up. We're kind of trying to stagger them. For the most part, we can use just whole sections because our cabin is so small. They come in 16 foot sections, but this is a 20 foot length. So we are having to stagger them and you want to kind of stagger them, not in one line, if that makes sense, obviously. And we're making sure to leave the little gaps you're supposed to leave, 3 16ths of an inch. And it's looking pretty good. Those gauges, the gecko gauges are working great. I don't know how we would get this job done without those. Well, reporting for service.
Okay, Errol. That's where I need your help. You got anything to say? It's getting slick up here. Rained on our scaffolding or melted. Now it's frozen. Getting there though. Getting there. We have a variety of cutting tools we're using. We're using the miter saw whenever we can because that gives us the straightest cuts. And then we're, we've been using the jigsaw. We have a skill saw we've been using. And we've been using this little multi-tool a lot. And this one's working really good actually for these small cuts. Well, I think my back's broken, but we did pretty good today. We got the wall done. It's pretty late in the evening. It doesn't get dark till like almost 10 o'clock now, which is awesome, but I think it's like 8 p.m. and stuff's starting to freeze. The temperature is really dropping today. We've got a nice clear day. We've got a lot of ice on our scaffolding, so we're gonna have to put this out in the sun. Hopefully tomorrow morning it'll thaw out for us. On this side, we kind of learned from the last side. Once you start getting close to the top, you wanna start taking measurements on your overlaps or your reveal. Otherwise, when you get to the way top on your last board, you might end up with like a really small one. So we did that on this one, it turned out great. We went from about a seven inch reveal, we knocked it down to a six inch, and then we went five and a half, five and a half, five and a half, all the way to the top. Worked out perfect for us. back out working on the siding again this morning. We have another beautiful day, beautiful but chilly. We got a new junction box put on our front outlet here. And the way the outlet was, was like a normal one. It's set flush with the wall. We wanted it to kick out a little bit. So it's kind of sticking out from the siding. We looked up a few different options. We were gonna go with the J block, which is like a piece of trim on here. And then you mount your plug on the outside of that. But we wanted to keep things kind of low profile. So we went with this little box here and we got another one. We're gonna put this one up a little later on when we get the scaffolding out, cause this is gonna go up top where our light is. Let's get to work. Well, we almost got it done. It is not quite complete. We can't actually get as high up as we need to get. And we had already foresaw this problem. We're gonna be renting some equipment soon to finish the job. Each wall took us one day, a little bit more than we anticipated. And if you followed us at all for any of our projects, this was no exception of 
numerous trips to the hardware store. I think we had to go like six times unplanned. We did a lot of research and try to get everything ready and buy extra stuff, but it's still, you know, we still fell short just a little bit, but I'm really happy with the way things looked. I know Eric's pretty happy with it too. I think it's, I think it's gonna be beautiful when it's done. Just electrocuted myself. <laughs> Do yeah. you want? Are you okay? Yeah. I hate getting electrocuted. I know. <laughs> smile. Show him. Show him. Show him your smile. Sorry. It's too funny. 